Speaking of like campaigns, one in particular, and I saw you mentioned it on a video that you did, but I've also actually seen this video, the Keenan Cahill video that you guys did with Brian Wilson, Cody Ross, and, and the mascots. How did that all come about? And for people that aren't familiar, maybe just give a little bit of a description about what it is and why you guys did it. Well, first of all, you know, um, and you mentioned earlier, our, our, we, we do a lot of, uh, of theme nights and, uh, at, at the Giants. Um, and uh, our special events team is, is pretty amazing. Uh, Faham and Cameron, Jeff Tucker, um, just do a great job with, you know, everything from Heritage Nights to, to you know, this year's schedule. Uh, we've, got, we've got a few surprises, but we've got a Bruce Lee um, tribute night. Um, there's going to be, uh, you know, we have a Cinco de Mayo celebration. We've got a, a food truck event that's called Off the Cove. Uh, we've got a lot of innovative and unique ideas that are kind of San Francisco. Yeah. So Faham comes up to me and, and asks, you know, what I thought about King Cahill. And I didn't know the name per se. And then I looked him up. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's the 50 Cent guy. You know, because I remember the 50 Cent video. Yeah. And so, you know... We looked, and Faham, um, who uh, contacted Keenan's manager and kind of pitched the idea, and then and worked with, and I worked with him on kind of the concept. And, and Faham was, you know, like, "Hey, we should try, uh, we should try doing the song Dynamite, which was a kind of a, a 18 T. This is coming off. We just won the World Series in 2010." Brian Wilson's beard was getting, you know, bigger, and he was becoming kind of a cultural icon. Cody Ross was literally a literally right, part. bigger, more popular, bigger, and everything. figuratively, yes. So we we were just, you know, we had all this kind of momentum going, and uh, it was just a and and the idea behind it was not just to make a viral video, uh, I guess just video. We weren't sure if it was going to go viral or not, but to do something unique and then to attach. Keenan actually has. Um, he has a cause that's very near and dear to him because he has a unique. Um, uh, uh, he he was having a surgery, and I don't want to. I don't know all the specifics of it, but he had a surgery that was coming up. So this uh, event was tied in. There was a, uh, an event at the ballpark that was going to have three thousand tickets available and tied in with him and a T-shirt. So this was kind of to promote that. So we worked with. MLB.com. We worked with Keenan's people. We filmed the video, and it was a simple video, and and we thought maybe we'd get fifty thousand hits. We'd be really, really excited by that. And by week one, by the end of the first week, we had one million hits on YouTube, and that's something that you know blew us away. Wow. And and not only did we sell out that event, um, but we also there were more and more fans of Keenan's, and I guess you could say. Um, you know, outside of our market that became Giants fans. They were like, wow, these guys are cool. Look at them. You know, they got this bearded guy and, and we love the song and Keenan Cahill. So, so we thought it kind of added to kind of the overall brand and voice of the Giants and it helped us sell tickets. It helped us kind of, you know, do something new and unique. And it showed that, yeah, we're in, you know, it was really, I was the most proud because there was another department that was using social media. I think that's the future. So, you know, everything will basically become social in nature. Yeah. It won't just be, you know, what are you guys doing in social media? Everything will have social media attached to it. So that was a perfect example. And I think that, you know, we're working on some new ideas for this year in, in that same vein. Cool. We can't reveal them here on the video? I can't reveal. I can't, <laughs> actually. I, I can say that I, uh, I flew to Los Angeles and, and was at a... Uh, and had some very interesting meetings and stuff that I never thought I'd be doing for a baseball team. So that was cool. So hopefully it comes together, but we're in the planning process of, of another kind of iconic uh, star in a video. So we'll see what happens. Cool. Interesting. So stay tuned for that, everyone. That's stay tuned. This video. No doubt. No, and that's a great example. I'm glad that you elaborated on how the whole Keenan Cahill video came together and what the purpose of it was. You really oh, yeah, and, and, he, and he also appeared live. That At night, it was May 25th, and he oh, performed nice. the first time ever he performed live. He oh, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, I've never was... seen so many people excited. I mean, this, I mean it, was, it was insane. It was like he was in the bleachers or with him, and, and it was, I don't know, you know, if Justin Bieber was there, maybe there'd be more excitement amongst a younger crowd, but, I mean, yeah. literally, 
I've never seen, I mean, people were going absolutely crazy for him. So it was really fun, and he was a great kid. I mean, he's only like 16 or 17. Um, family was there, so it was really neat to kind of see that happen live. And, and, uh, and like I said, that night was sold out. Um, but um, it was a, it was it was kind of a, a new thing for us, and, and I think that's kind of a cool thing working for the Giants. We're mm-hmm. always looking to try to you know do something a little unique because we have that that San Francisco kind of uh, market that allows us to to be a little different than your yeah. traditional baseball you know settings. For sure, and you went into that uh, you know creating that video with Keenan too, without the intention of selling more tickets and building your fan base and all these different things. It just happened to result from, you know, you guys just being creative and doing something that seemed human, right? Yeah, I mean, just stepping out of our traditional way of marketing and trying something new. And again, it wasn't my idea. And so I was just, you know, I was just kind of happy to be a part of it and say, yeah, well, here's how we can do it. And and again, there was a lot of things that happened in place of that to make it successful. And But we were, we were willing to take that shot and, and to try it and... You know, and then the, even the Giants executive team was like, yeah, let's try it out. Let's see what happens. Not even knowing, kind of trusting us to, you know, well, let's make it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it, you know, and then the press coverage alone was, you know, just blew us away in terms of what, what had happened. So it was, it was really fun. And uh, it also showed that, you know, when people say, you know, all you have to do is win. And, that, and, and that's true, you know, winning drives success. But, you know, I think... What do you do with that momentum? Do you mm-hmm. just, you know, take it and say we're world champions, or do you actually, you know, continue to try new and different things and and, you, and leverage that momentum? So that was kind of cool too. Yeah, no, it's a great point, Brian. And the uh, what I was referencing earlier about this top ten socially engaged teams on Facebook throughout the post or the the preseason. Uh, I'll send you this if you haven't seen it yet. But essentially, it's it's got a bunch of rankings on there, but. I don't see the New York Yankees and the Red uh, Red Sox and uh, some of the bigger teams, right? I see the Pirates on there. I see the Diamondbacks. I see some of these teams that might be in, you know, smaller, maybe not smaller markets, but markets that aren't as big for the baseball side of things that are doing some really creative stuff. At least that's what this tells me right here. They're trying to be creative and find new ways to be able to engage with their fans, and hopefully it's resulting in success all around. Yeah, that's a cool thing about, I think, that social media kind of, Obviously, the, you know, teams like the Giants and Yankees will have more fans than the Pirates. Um, but, you know, the tools are there, and, and you have the ability to do some great things. And, you know, um, and it's kind of equal. Any, you know, creativity doesn't cost any money, mm. and, and these tools don't cost any money. So, um, and you don't need, you know, 2.7 million hits on YouTube to be successful. So you can do a lot of interesting things within your market and capture and be engaging with your fans. Um, and I think that's what we're seeing now. And, and again, it's, it's really cool, you know, to be able to, you know, have success and do this, but by no stretch am I, you know, saying this is the only way to do it. And it's just how we've, you know, how and we're in this great situation of, you know, we won a world series. We're still riding, you know, the success of the team and we're able to sell tickets um, at a higher rate. So, and we're still focused on selling tickets, but not as much as other teams. So, you know, that changes our strategy a little bit. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, we're, we know that, you know, that's not going to last forever. We've got to always, you know, continue to innovate and be smart about how we market and engage with fans. And I think that's, you know, it's always cyclical in sports that, you know, you're going to have your good times and bad times. And you've got to appreciate the good times, but, you know, understand and, and get smart. How what, what would we do if we... We're in last place, and you know, and, right. and the place was half filled. And how, what would our strategy be? So, yeah. um, it the, the small, you know, the teams like the Pirates and the Royals and, and the Braves, you know, I'm constantly watching and seeing what they're doing because I mean, I think there there's some great innovations and, and interesting ways to engage with fans, and and we're all learning from each other. So I, I think I, I I don't you know ever want to say like oh gosh we're we're the leaders, or we're, we did a great job last year, and that's it. It's it's always it's that competitive nature and, and the ability to kind of, and I think also you know in social media you're listening first always. So yes. um, I know I'm talking a lot on here. But I listen <laughs> we want to hear from you though. We want to. I'm hear what always you watching. Say. Yeah, I'm always watching and learning what other teams are doing, and I think you've got to you know understand that it's you know it's. 
and be and be okay with you know saying that other teams are doing more than you and understanding from that and and learning from them. So mm -hmm. uh, I think that helps as well.